So I'm going to quickly uh, work, Paige and I are going to give kind of a brief overview of the Climate Action Plan, um, kind of frame a lot of the context and give uh, an overview of work to date, setting us up for a lot of the discussion that we will have. So um, first of all, I wanted to give an overview of what a climate action plan is. So uh, com community action plans are often strategic plans that various different types of government or government agencies use to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions over time. And a lot of times climate action plans, which is a type of community action plan, has specific goals about mitigating climate change impacts, supporting community health and well-being, as well as building a resilient economy for their community. Uh, a climate action plan involves uh, a few different steps and a lot of this is also iterative and cyclical as well. And so, Oftentimes, one of the very first steps of a climate action plan is conducting a greenhouse gas inventory, uh, which is used to inform current greenhouse gas emission sources and helps identify potential pathways, goals, and targets to reduce those emissions. Um, oftentimes, in determining goals and targets, we rely on our emissions inventory, um, as well as other different types of considerations, such as regional goals, needs, as well as things like climate resiliency building goals as well. One thing we did want to highlight is even though climate action plans often uh, focuses on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, it can have other types of adaptation benefits or co-benefits as we may see. And so uh, there's a lot of opportunity to think about how the city and the community can both simultaneously reduce greenhouse gas emissions while increasing community resiliency to climate change. After setting goals and targets, we'll be selecting strategies and actions. And these suite of strategies and actions often help achieve those targets and span multiple focus areas. After selecting the strategies and actions and developing a plan, we implement those actions, we monitor, evaluate, and adaptively manage them, and then we essentially continue repeating the process to make sure that we have a climate action plan that's responsive to immediate community needs and priorities. I'm going to turn this over to Paige, who will go over the overview of some of the work to date that the city has done. Thanks, Mike. So we at the city have spent a majority of 2020 uh, developing our greenhouse gas inventory. And like Mike mentioned, the greenhouse gas inventory provides really critical insight into the sources and areas in which emissions are being emitted in the city of Burien. Um, and this inventory and the forecasting took time due to the technical nature of the inventory. Um, and of course was affected by the onset of the pandemic, which is why the inventory took almost the entire year. Which brings us to the beginning of 2021, where we're working with uh, the community advisory group and the community to help develop these strategies and actions for our climate action plan. And through the summer, uh, we're going to be refining those strategies with you all. Um, in the fall, we'll have a draft of the Burien Climate Action Plan and incorporate the feedback we get from the community advisory group as well as the community. And we hope to have this plan adopted in the winter of 2021 so that we can begin that monitoring process in early 2022. Next slide. So the Climate Action Plan is not the start of our sustainability work in the city. We have several different relevant city directives and resolutions and ordinances that we have incorporated throughout um, you know, the 27 years that we've been a city. These are just some of the most notable. This is not encompassing of all. Um, and what the Climate Action Plan looks to do is to build upon the successes we've had and to create space for new, um, new ordinances and resolutions in the future. Next slide. So this is the 2019 Burien Green, uh, Greenhouse Gas Inventory. Some of the most 
uh, important things to point out here is that transportation and mobile sources are the largest is the largest sector for the emissions that we emit in the city of Burien. And, and you can see that one of the major sources of those emissions are passenger vehicles. Um, we, we also see that residential energy is the next highest. And something to note there is that a lot of the carbon that's being emitted comes from the natural gas that we use in the city. Um, where an installed waste is another category here, uh, about 4% of our emissions. Something I would like to point out is that the emissions that we collected for the 2019 inventory were all collected using local data from our utilities and that we are missing a small piece of the puzzle. The wastewater data would be needed for future inventories to make it more robust, but a majority of the emissions that we inventoried for 2019 are captured in our uh, pie chart you see here. Next slide. So this leads us to our emissions reductions targets that we're considering for the Climate Action Plan. In the short term, we'd like to reduce our emissions 25% by 2025. And staying in line with um, other Puget Sound cities, we would like to reduce our emissions 50% by 2030. And while we have a target set for 50% by 2030, we recognize that a lot of the science is actually telling us we need to be more ambitious with our targets and we need to incorporate a more fair share uh, consideration of our historic contributions to greenhouse gas emissions, which means we should be targeting more ambitious strategies to try and reduce about 60% by 2030. And then finally, having our long-term goal be reducing those emissions by 80% by 2050. Next slide. Great. So before we transition to this next part, um, we have uh, a little over 10 minutes for any questions that people have about anything we've presented on so far. So I see there are a few questions in the chat. So maybe uh, I can uh, facilitate some of this Q&A and direct questions to you and Paige and Alex um, from the city. Yeah, that sounds great. So the very first question um, is from jo Joanna. Joanna, how does utilities capture this data? And I'm assuming um, this is in reference to this slide. So do you wanna give a quick overview um, of uh, that process and methodology, Paige? Yeah, totally. Uh, great question, Joanna. So for the transportation uh, sector that right here that's listed as the highest amount of our emissions inventory, um, that was collected from the Puget Sound Regional Council through a vehicle, average vehicle miles traveled in the city. And it's a model that is uh, used around the country to gather data around transportation emissions. Um, and this model is updated regularly through the Puget Sound Regional Council. And it's really an average of how much traffic is happening within our jurisdiction you know, it looks at different kinds of levels of traffic, whether it's from Burien to Burien, or if it's from outside Burien to inside Burien or leaving Burien to go somewhere else. It takes an average of all those daily miles traveled and it uh, produces an a, like a annual vehicle miles traveled for our transportation emissions. Our energy emissions are calculated from the electricity and natural gas use. Um, in the city, we have two different utilities. We have Seattle City Light and Puget Sound Energy. And we work with those utilities to get data around the amount of energy used. And then the solid waste emissions are derived from tonnage reports um, that, are, that are from our solid waste hauler, Recology. And it details how much garbage we send to the landfill and how much recycling and compost was picked up in the city. I hope that answers your question, but feel free to put in the chat if that does not. Great. Thanks for that. Um, so uh, the next question is from Aaron. So to avert climate catastrophe, we need to get to net zero emissions by 2050. So why is the goal only 80% for that year? Um, right. I think this is great. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, Aaron, that's a great point. Um, right now we're considering lots of different strategies and actions to reduce our targets more than the stated emissions, like I was explaining for our medium term goal. Um, we recognize that uh, 
we're more likely going to need to be looking at a science-based target, which is more near 60%, which would push our long-term um, emissions reductions closer to 100% by 2050. And we have some modeling that we've done on our end to look at different carbon neutrality options by 2050. This is staying in line with what other cities around the Puget Sound region have uh, committed to, um, but this is something that we can discuss as a community in terms of our emissions reduction goals. Great, thank you, Paige. So um, the next question from Colleen is, th is the 31% residential energy all attributable, attributable to natural gas? No, it is not all attributable to natural gas. Um, that is where a large of the large amount of the emissions come from for the residential energy, but it's not all from the natural gas. Great. Uh, so the next question is from Brenda. How much is the inventory data affected by COVID? That is a great question. So we actually, this inventory is from 2019 before the pandemic affects have really happened. So we don't know. Um, usually greenhouse gas inventories are done, you know, backcasted looking backwards because we need to get the data for the previous year. So that's a good question for our 2020 or 2021 inventories that we create to see how that's really been affected. Great, thank you, Paige. So the next question is from Don. What are mobile sources other than transportation? Um, and yeah. I guess, yeah. That's a great question. Um, that includes, you know, other transportation sources that go through Burien, such as, you know, the buses. Um, when we look at other different kinds of mobile sources, we can look at the ways in which we get around town that aren't just with our cars. So the one of the biggest ones is looking at the buses that go through the city here in Burien. Great, um, thank you for that. So the next question we have is, if all the residential greenhouse gases don't come from gas, where do they come from? Uh, for example, uh, doesn't Seattle City Light generate all their electricity from hydro? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the emissions factor for Seattle City Light um, is still something we have to consider. Most of their electricity is, is considered carbon neutral, or I should say all of it is considered carbon neutral. Um, but the way in which the model is calculated, um, it still looks at how much energy is being used by that. But I can get back to whoever answered that question with a more specific answer later. Great, thank you, Paige. Um, I also, uh, <coughs> um, it seems like uh, as a reminder, if you want to use um, interpretation, um, you can go to, to the bottom of your screen. You can click this interpretation, uh, which kind of looks like a globe. And then you can select the language that you want to be um, interpreted. Uh, because Zoom doesn't have Vietnamese as an option, um, you need to click Portuguese. Great. I um, will go to the next question that we have. Is do we know how much of the residential energy use is from oil versus natural gas? Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at the exact data that was collected. Um, we did look at different oils that are used for homes in Burien through census level data. So I don't know off the top of my head how much is that percentage. Great. And I think this, we have, an, we have another question related to oil heat, um, but it's, uh, do you have maybe an estimation um, just because a significant number of older homes are still reliant on oil? Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to give the wrong answer, but it was pretty small compared to the overall usage from natural gas and electricity. It's, it was fairly small. 
Thank you for that. Um, one second while we, uh, let's just take a moment to pause here if there are any other questions. We're a little bit ahead of schedule, but it seems like there is some issue with one of the interpretation channels. So um, thank you all for just being patient while we hold a second while we make sure the Vietnamese um, uh, channel is uh, working and functioning. And I guess, um, John, uh, if our, who's our Vietnamese interpreter, um, if you want to mute, unmute yourself just to make sure we, um, are testing it out. All right, well, while um, we're figuring that out, um, we do have one more question uh, from Olga. Uh, so um, the city, uh, will the city change its public transportation or how do we anticipate the city changing transportation? Thank you, Olga, for the question. Um, that's something that we can discuss when we look at our goals and focus areas is how do we want our transport, public transportation to be thought of and be used in the city of Burien? Um, you know, we could, that's something we definitely want to discuss in that uh, goals area is how, how do we want to utilize that public transportation to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions? Thank you, Olga. All right, well, uh, we, we're still a little ahead of schedule, so I'm just gonna check in with Addy and see, are we okay with um, the interpretation or what else is? Um... I, think, I think we have John back. Okay, great. Um, actually, well, actually not, not totally. Sure, John, can you hear us? It looks like you're unmuted, but I'm not really sure. I'll send another message to John privately. Great. Thank you, Addy. All right, well, we have one more question and then maybe um, we can go uh, forward. So uh, the next question is from Josh. So is there any data on greenhouse gases being released from the airport and does this consider emissions uh, from uh, from the 509518? I think the uh, 509518 is in reference to the, the roads, Highway 509 and uh, 518. Um, thanks, Josh, for the question. Uh, sorry I didn't see your direct message. It's kind of hard to keep up with uh, speaking. Uh, the transportation and mobile sources is with cars and trucks and heavy duty vehicles and light duty vehicles. It does not take into the consideration from the airport. So it would be taking into consideration the 509 and 518 roads that run through Burien. Great, thank you, Paige. All right, well, we have one more question and then we're gonna um, transition into um, our first activity um, tonight as a group. So um, how do we ensuring that this plan will get used and not just sit on the shelf collecting dust? That's a great question. Um, this, this is something that's a council priority and we have staff, including myself and another member on this call who are dedicated to monitoring the actions and strategies after the plan's created. So it's not just a plan to sit on the shelf, there will be plans to implement and monitor the actions over time. 